You wouldn't give me one day to myself, huh? You wouldn't give me one day. I'm sorry, but I'm here for your help. About what? You really want me to convince people that Bumblebee's not a reboot? Perhaps they are right. No, no. I... I know it's a prequel. That is why they must be reminded by another human of the trust we share. This isn't my problem. Not yet. But I fear it soon will be. I know, and I want to help you. I do. But I'm not some paramount marketing guy. I'm just a normal guy with normal problems. Fate rarely calls upon us at a moment of our choosing. You're out to this prime. You don't need me. We do more than you know. Hey everybody, Mike here, and it is time for another episode of The Buzz, which is a series where I talk about a bunch of things leading up to the release of Bumblebee this December. And as you saw from my little intro, we have to have a little discussion here. I have noticed, that especially in the video that I did, um, showcasing how Cybertron looks different compared to uh, the previous five movies, that a lot of people still think that Bumblebee is a reboot. And I'm quite surprised by this, because even though I can kind of maybe understand uh, slightly that you could consider it a reboot. Um, it is very much a prequel from everything that we know so far. So I'm gonna be going over some stuff, just kind of showcasing that this movie is indeed marketed as a prequel movie. Um, so first off, before we get into the hardcore facts of this, I wanna start out by showcasing just things that we've seen through the trailers and things that we know about the movie. So first of all, um, that first trailer that came out for um, Bumblebee, the teaser trailer, you know, it was months ago that the uh, first one came out, um, it started off with a Bobby Bolivia quote, and this right there tells me that this is a prequel, this is connected to the other five Transformers films. They would not have that Bobby Bolivia quote about, uh, you know, driver don't pick the car, car pick the driver, if this wasn't a prequel. Um, if you kind of look at it from a different standpoint, like let's say we have the Tom Holland movies uh, with for Spider-Man, and those are connected to the MCU. Now, we wouldn't have a quote from a character in Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man films in, in a, in a Spider-Man Homecoming trailer or anything like that. Uh, it just wouldn't make sense because they're not connected. Um, just like uh, for the... X-Men movies. Uh, once the X-Men become a part of the MCU, we won't have, um, you know, quotes from the previous X-Men franchise inserted into a trailer for a new X-Men film. That's just because they won't be connected. Now, Bumblebee, they actually showed a, or they actually, you know, you heard a quote from a previous film in the trailer. So it's like, hey, this is a prequel. This takes place before the first Transformers film. So I think that right there shows like, hey, this is this is definitely not a reboot. Um, they're all connected, and I think that's the biggest in-universe evidence that we have. Now, if we get a little uh, more um, looking at the the fine line here, uh, we can look at Sector Seven. Sector Seven is going to play a large part in the Bumblebee film, and Sector Seven is new to Transformers. Um, it was first introduced in the original 2007 film. Um, it had never been in any type of Transformers media before. It was completely new. And uh, they have kind of been the organization that has kept track, of, kept track of the Transformers all these years. Now, Sector 7 is back in the Bumblebee film, and they seem to be having the same type of... Um, appearance as what they had in the first film, um, down to even trying to capture uh, Bumblebee uh, almost the same way as how they did in the, in the 2007 film. So there's that right there. There's also the fact that Sector 7 in the Bumblebee film is going to have a uh, um, something to do with Hoover Dam, as we saw in one of the trailers. Hoover Dam is going to be playing a part in the Bumblebee film. 
uh, Hoover Dam, of course, is associated with Sector 7 because that is where Megatron is kept in the first film, and, as well as the Allspark. So the fact that we're seeing Sector 7 with Hoover Dam in these trailers, it's not just an Easter egg. I mean, that's it, it's part of the Transformers history within this universe. Um, also, if we look at the Bumblebee design, I mean, Bumblebee is modeled to look like a altered version of the uh, Bayformers design, the original design that he had in Michael Bay's films. Of course, it is a little different, but it is definitely on par with what we've seen from Bumblebee during the previous five movies, as well as the fact that Bumblebee is still mute. And I understand that Bumblebee has been mute in other uh, Transformers media ever since he went mute in the first Transformers film, but the fact that they're using the same type of design for him, plus him being mute, plus the Bobby Bolivia quote in the trailer, plus Sector 7, plus Hoover Dam, it just makes sense that this is connected to the previous five films. So those are more of the, hey, this is in-universe stuff that we can look at right now and kind of infer that Bumblebee is connected, but we have also actually have some hard evidence that Bumblebee is actually a prequel. And most of them have come from interviews from people involved with the film. Uh, there's, I'm going to show you this first little clip of a video here. This is an interview that tra director Travis Knight did. Uh, Travis Knight is directing the Bumblebee movie. It will be the first film that is not directed by Michael Bay. And here in this interview, you will see that Travis Knight explains that this takes place 20 years before the first film. We didn't start on this film with a blank canvas. You know, there, you know, there are 10 years of, of filmic designs that we've, we've seen on the screen. Uh, but because we set this film 20 years prior to the first Transformers film, it gave us some, some license, some liberty to play around with the design aesthetic. So as you can see there, he flat out stated that this is, is 20 years before the first Transformers film took place in 2007. Um, of course, this movie takes place in 1987, um, so it's even down to the numbers right there that, you know, Transformers took place in 2007, I guess. So um, there's that right there. Now, uh, Christina Hodson, who was the writer for this film, um, doesn't straight out say that like, hey, this is connected, but um, she did an interview a while back and she connected uh, the Bumblebee film to kind of the story of how Bumblebee was uh, had the relationship with Sam in the first three films. And I'm gonna go ahead and read that for you right here. She said, this is really an origin story for Bumblebee, but the character traits are all the same. They're all there, his loyalty, his kindness, He's fun-loving, and really, he's been the one who has always had that special bond with humans, whether it's Sam or someone else. That was something that I wanted to lean into a bit and see where and how that began. So, you have to kind of, you know, look between the lines here, but she's talking about how, how everything began between Bumblebee and the humans, uh, his relationship with them, and she ad ends up mentioning Bumblebee and Sam's relationship. So... You could maybe say that, oh, well, she's just talking about in other Transformers media, but she's talking about an origin story and how that relates to Bumblebee's relationship with Sam, which further infers that this is a prequel. It, it is not a reboot. It does have connection to the previous films. And we once again see the prequel word used in two interviews. I'm going to show the first one right here. This one is from Haley Steinfeld, who of course plays Charlie Watson, the main human character in the film. And she does this interview here, and she flat out says the word prequel. Bumblebee, uh, which is the next installment in the ongoing Transformers saga. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one is different in that it is a prequel, right? So set yes. the stage for me a little bit. Uh, how does this movie get us ready for the events that unfold in 2007. And now in the same round of interviews, uh, John Cena ended up speaking on this as well. He plays Sector 7 Agent Burns, and he even mentions the word prequel. So I'll go ahead and show you that little clip here. This prequel kind of, it, it takes a lot of that information, but it also tells how that information came to be. Okay. Uh, it's an origin tale, so it's gonna focus more on Bumblebee. So as you can see, using all of this evidence from interviews, from the director, the cast, the writer, as well as information that we see from the films so far, such as the Bobby Bolivia quote, Sector 7, Hoover Dam, Bumblebee's design, it all kind of fits together to the to 
um, piece it as that this is a prequel and not a reboot. So I know a lot of people were saying like, oh no, it's a reboot, it's a reboot, it's been confirmed as a reboot, it has not been confirmed as a reboot whatsoever. I know there are some media outlets that use the word reboot kind of freely and just kind of mean it as something to say something new, something different, but as far as a complete walk away from the other five Transformers movies, it doesn't seem to be the case. Now, with the rumors that the Transformers Cinematic Universe has been cancelled, uh, that's not to say that maybe uh, the, the movie was reconstructed uh, later on in the process with reshoots and stuff to kind of make it stand on its own more, but this movie was definitely made as a prequel. It was conceptualized as a prequel, uh, meant to come before the first five films, before the first Transformers movie. So I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm going to say it's a prequel. If I'm wrong, I will eat my words. Uh, I don't know what I would do. Um, so, but uh, uh, it, it's it's a prequel. I, I, I look at the evidence here, and I just can't think of it being a reboot based on everything that we have seen so far. So um, I'm going to stick to that. You guys can think what you want. Uh, we will know for sure at the end of December. Uh, let me know your thoughts on if you think I'm completely wrong or I'm completely right or you're kind of in the middle. Let me know in the comment section down below. And also make sure to follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And until next time, I'm Mike. See ya.